legendary status. Big XL, Sam Pisa, aka TF. Where y'all go learn, man? You can't stop what's inevitable. It's the incredible. Pisa, aka TF, dropping jewels, but they edible. I ate my vegetable, but he ate my spinach. Riding with Vic again, so no, we ain't finished. Legendary status, so no, you cannot copy. Riding dirty radio, so crispy, y'all so sloppy. Instant to the street, so we know just what is needed. But keep it underground, staying down, cause we ain't greedy. This is where you find what is popping for the culture, where we keeping it all fresh and stay away from all the vultures. No, scavengers here, just keeping it real. Think got it out the mud, but it's still so clear. So sit back, relax, and just let us lead you. If you're trolling for no reason, then we don't need you. It's big x he can't be stopped. Riding dirty forever, the home of real hip-hop. What up, 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 good people, it's your boy Big XL. This is the Ride and Dirty Show where we bridge the gap between hip hop and everyday life, all right? One time for all the good people that check us out at WRFG 89.3 FM, and one time for all the good people that check us out at Ride 95. That's our FM radio home as well as our internet radio home. And I got to send major shouts out to all the streaming platforms that carry all of our content, whether it's YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Audio Max, MixCloud, however you are streaming us on demand. Shout out to all the hardworking staff members of all those facilities who facilitate the carriage of our content. All right, now, today is no different than any other day right here on the Ride and Dirty Show with your boy, Big XL. But before we bring on our guests, make sure y'all follow us on all all social media platforms at Riding Dirty Radio, and that's R I D I N D U R T Y R A D I O. That's R I D I N D U R T Y R A D I O. And on YouTube, that's Riding Dirty TV. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today is no different than any other day on the Riding Dirty platform. So we have a very, very credit author on the line. So I'm gonna bring him up right now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Riding Dirty platform, my guy Joe. M and Joe, I'm not gonna butcher your last name. Say <laughs> that last name for me. You you cannot butcher it. Sekimonio. <laughs> Sekimonio. Sekimonio. Yes. Can I just call you Joe M? Yes, <laughs> I'll allow you because even Sekimonio, you know, is is my grand grandfather name. So I don't know even if I'm butchering it right now. So <laughs> you okay. can say it the way you want to because my way is not the right way. Okay, Sekimonio. So. All right, Joe, welcome to the Ride and Dirty Platform. Uh, the first thing I can say is I'm very, very humbled to have you here on the show to talk to our loyal listeners, and I like to call them my extended family members. Thank you. Thank you for letting me talking to your extended family member. I hope that I'll be one of them. <laughs> can you, you adopt are, me? <laughs> I will adopt you as long as you don't ask for no money, Joe. Now we have a problem. What kind of family is this? <laughs> <laughs> We're starting out on a bad foot. Starting out on a bad foot. So, Joe, look, let's get into it, man, because I know you're a very creative author and you have some very interesting things you want to talk about. But the first thing I like to ask in, the, in getting to know my guests, I always like to know, tell me about your humble beginnings. Where are you from? So um, I was born in Congo in Central Africa. Uh, moved here when I was a kid because my dad did his PhD in Florida. We moved. We moved back to what I call the fatherland. Then after high school, I came back to I I, I came to the U.S. for uh for, for for university, right? And then since then there was a war in Congo and everything that went on and on and on. So I'm a Congolese citizen, but I'll I reside in the U.S. So I like to tell people like this. So I'm a Congolese citizen, American planted, but world fermented 
because I travel around the world, try to get, try to understand the same problem of inequality, poverty, wealth creation from different perspective, right? So that's what I do. Okay. And, all right. Yes. How did you, first of all, how did you become a world traveler? I, 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 I don't call myself like, for say a world traveler, I'm just a researcher. I'm somebody who has a question from the beginning who thought I'm going to find an answer one place, then I handed up to another place and I keep seeing the problem, right? Because I, I tell people like this, I was uh, 10 years, I think like 12 years ago, I was in Kenya and this woman gave me a kid, she was begging on the street. I, don't ha I didn't have change. So my wife went to look in the bank for change and the police came around and they look at me and they left. So I asked a woman like, what the fuck is going on? She said, no, they were looking at you if you're a tourist, right? Because if you're a tourist, they cannot arrest you. They pass a decree, an ordinance that people should not beg on the street. So, and after that, I was in St. Petersburg, right? In Florida. And I saw a guy get, going uh, on, uh, on, on Greyhound. So I, just, I was just curious. I asked, what's going on? He said, no, I was arrested because I look like a hobo on the street. So in St. Pete, the arrest you if you look bizarre, poor, let's say poor, okay. and they give you one ticket out of the town. So this is Kenya, and this is the US, both instead of fighting poverty, they, they wage a war against the poor. So that's how, that's why I start going around the world to understand, oh shit, shit, this shit seems to be different, but it seems is the same approach to poverty, right? Everywhere else, even where it's dirt poor, they don't fight, it seems like they don't fight Poverty, they fight the poor, right? They're less richer than them, or seem to be all right, richer than them. That's the one they don't want to show to the world. And that's how I start traveling and talking about those issues. And everywhere I go, they add to my discussion, right? Their own perspective that enrich mind, right? And that's what if you can call me world traveler, I don't think that traveling go going to analyze poverty is is tourism. I don't think. <laughs> Okay. I don't think you qualify as tourist, right? Because okay. I only go to dirty and people show me more, one of the weirdest stuff of poverty in the world. Like I go somewhere where people know me, they take me to where there's like slum, right? Hospital that there's a half stuff, you know, and they show me how people waste money. So, so yes, that's how you can. Can you call me a traveler? Will you say I'm a traveler? Well, you, well, you travel. You yes. Travel around. You go place to place. Now I have to ask, man, because you say you go to these different areas and you find the poorest places. Um, is that hard for you? It, it's hard because this is human. You meet women who tell you story, right? I don't want to Google places. I don't want. I don't want you know these economists that give you numbers, right? Inflation is twelve percent. Uh, unemployment rate is twelve. Point five. What does it mean? <laughs> right? It means right. that some other people don't have jobs. So I don't do that number. I like to go there to hear the story, right? Those 0.25%, that's 55%. Uh, what that means, right? Because when you say uh, poverty, I, I came to understand this compared to poverty is all over the world, right? We can agree with it. But this is a different part that they don't talk about it, the quality of poverty. Right in um in the U.S. is more than poverty. People don't have social services, you know, uh, have inequity access. But then you go to other places where they don't have clean water. That's not poverty, like in the U.S. It's the poverty, but that's what I call primitive poverty. So right. to yeah, to explain people both places, even when um poor places, it, some of these people try to justify the like, yeah, you know, even the U.S. there's poverty. I say yes. But it's modern. <laughs> Here is primitive. And that's how it's hard because you gotta look at it differently and dive in people's reality. Because this is not stories. So you really dive in people reality. And some of these people even open to you. So they make you sleep where they sleep, eat the food that they eat. Because when you see this food, then when you when you wanna try a food and understand this poor food, you gotta test it. And that shit test poverty, right? Okay. So you, that's that's a hard part because you carry, even in uh, some refugee camp, right? You see kids who didn't do anything wrong, and then some of them don't even have an idea how bad it is. So you carry all those story, but 
what keeps me going is at least I'm there to tell the story in a different way. And I talk about solution. I just don't cry. Okay. I tell solution. All right. Now, in in your travels, what has been the most poverty stricken area uh, you visited? That's going to surprise you, but is Alabama. <laughs> Alabama? Yes. I've been to places like Alabama or Macon, Georgia, where you be like. Uh, hold on, hold on, stop, 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 hold yes. on. Yes. Macon, Georgia? Yes. What I say is, is worse than some places I've been to Nigeria is because around this glamorous, <laughs> you find this little pocket that's a poor, right? And right. then you find people who cannot have access their way out because they've been in jail trying to survive, right? They, they cannot have access to job. There's no, everything is there, right? There's right. this big hospital, but somebody cannot go there. And you just see people broken, right? They, they're broken. There's no hope. And that's why I feel like it was more touching than when I go to Nigeria in a, in a, in a, in a, in the camp, right? Because in Nigeria, in this camp, people are trying to help. But in the US, there's no help. When, when, when you have, uh, you, when you've been in prison, right? There's something on your back that carries you all your life. And there's some places like you go in the US, you're like, oh shit, this modern poverty can be worse, right? Because the entire system is against you. Make sure you don't move up the ladder. The ladder, right? And that's why that's why I say Alabama. I've been to play some Alabama, some Alabama, you just smell like it's still in 1960, right? That anger. That, that anger, right? The, you, you can feel the spirit of people who got beaten, right? Some people don't even want to go back there and understand. So that's why I say it. a lot of people are surprised. And I've gone like, yes, it's just the context in which one, there's no way out. But this other African place, you see that you can get out. Um, I'm gonna be very honest. You completely, you completely surprised me by saying Alabama. I thought you would definitely say um, some I, 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 Ethiopia or maybe no. Mexico or I just no. didn't expect you to say anything in the United States was one of the most poverty stricken areas you've been in. Yes, yes, yes. Is is in the U.S. like is. Is people don't understand how is somebody can be broken by going, especially coming from prison in United States, because some other place in the world, I say like in Congo, you can rob a bank, go do time, come back, and get a job at the bank because we don't have criminal history. <laughs> right? There are people who just say like, oh, you look like the guy robbed the bank. Uh, fuck it, right? Get a job at the same bank. Here, that's it, right? You got fined with a, with a little bit of drug. That's it. Your world is done. So, so, some other, other thing that I say, yes, there's civil war. But when I see cases like somebody down in Georgia, somebody jogging and gets killed like a fucking dog. And you say, like, oh, no, oh, running around jogging, you know, is a free is free for everybody. That's how we can uh, get the U.S. healthy, right, by running, right? exercising. Like, no, some people cannot exercise because they can get killed like a chicken. <laughs> like, that's, that contrast on those pictures make you understand, like, yes, these two pictures, they, it's so complex. What you mean by poverty, well, striking poverty, and when you introduce all this context, yes, what I see is striking, maybe somebody else will feel like he's just fine. Now, um, how does the Congo compare to the United States when it comes to poverty stricken areas is is primitive right so what i mean by primitive is like there is the, the there's still you know the us is like the us is a is a developed world right so the us know how to create um prosperity but they don't know how to share it that's why there's a gap between the rich and the poor but in congo this they're not at that phase yet right they're still in the phase of learning how to accumulate wealth by individual so the difference between the rich and the poor is not that big. In the mind, yes. But some places when there's no electricity, would you be rich or poor? Everybody don't have electricity. 
So in those contexts now to compare them, yes, it's a little bit difficult, right? Because I've got these places, some people have money, but they don't have access to amenities, right? right. You, can have money, you can have money in Congo, but you don't have electricity, right? Or the roads are so, are so messed up. Or you cannot buy a car that you buy here, used car, 2000 People go in Congo, they sell it fifteen to 20000 right? So if somebody does not have a car in Congo, it's not the same as here because it takes so much to afford the same lifestyle. Okay, okay, okay. Um, let's. So you say that you like to concentrate also on solutions. Um, first of all, let's talk about when did you decide to become an author? Because you have a very extensive catalog of books you've written. When did you decide to become an author and how much of different types of solutions do you put in your work when it comes to the books you write? So uh, it started the first real book that I wrote that I'm known for. It came like 10 years ago or more, Economic Jihad. It, it was just because I was pissed, right? <laughs> I was like, I'm pissed. I'm going to write this why the world is so messed up. And I'm going to say this solution, right? So as I show people, like people ask me questions, like this problem is not here, is in Iran, there's poverty, This, but I say it in stories because I don't feel like people should explain economics by math equation, right? That's just to intimidate people. So I tell people why we buy, why we buy, to give an example, I say, this is a problem. Some of us, some, some, some of us don't have enough and this other one have too much. And we're gonna fix it. And this stuff, I call it ethosism. So I went on writing the book, and people keep asking me, What is that ethosism? So I thought that people understood it because I can see it. Ten years later, I was writing a book, Don't Have Sex with an uh, Activist. <laughs> right? It's a weird book. <laughs> What's the name of it again? Don't Have Sex with an Activist. So I just say like how in the book I just tell the story about my abuse, right? I was abused when I was a kid. My parents what was the divorce, you know. So I just say how it can be an activist. People with baggages they tend to have the best chick around, right? Because we women get addicted to sorry, sorry. So I was writing the book to say like, yo, if you hear somebody an activist, don't fuck with him because you're gonna get addicted. Uh, about his world, high view, and his freedom, because sometimes you feel so free because everything else has happened to you, right? You can right. today if you, you you deprive me of food, I don't give a shit, right? It happened when I was a kid. People did shit to me, you know. I don't give a shit, going if you arrest me. So that's what I was writing, and people keep asking me, "What is ethicism?" I'm like, "Fuck!" <laughs> so I wrote a book about ethicism, and I tried to say, you see, like today, you have your your radio. Right? Right. In 1900, you couldn't. Not only because you're black, but so in 1900, to open a show or a shoe factory, somebody had to have money to open the factory, but also to pay for training or your labor, right? Your employee. Yes. But with time, these people, man, they got lazy. They're like, shit, I want to make all the money. I don't want to pay for these stupid people. So they need to go to school, right? So now, more than ever, ever, more people have their own means of participation in an enterprise, right? When you're looking for a job or anything, they ask you to write a resume. If you have a degree or not, your, your experience. So you buy them. That's why in the U.S., uh, student loan is $1.6 trillion. People pay to have their own means of participation to get, in a, to get a job, but they're still getting paid like a, like a slave, like in 1900, right? We still have a salary. Mm -hmm. And when you look at... Only in the U.S. I tell people, like in the U.S., the two percent, like the the, the five percent on top, they control sixty-five percent of the wealth, right? And the fifty percent at the bottom, they only control less than three percent. And I said, what's the difference, right? Is it because they're born? No, the one at the bottom they receive what we call salary, a wage. The one on the top, they get a percentage of the profit. I like. It's not fair because we all come with our own means of participation. This is not 19th century. And we know today the economy works on innovation, right? right? And one of the resources 
that they told us that like, capitalism is based on scarcity of resources. I said, no, innovation, human ability to create is infinite. So your knowledge, your skill, your muscle is good as good as muscle. Uh, no, it's good as gold and money. By that, I said, let's go back. You know how pirates used to share the loot? Mm -hmm. They share by percentage. Nobody has. So, so like we all looting everybody. So everybody going to get need to get a percentage. And the consequence is two things. One, I like socialist communists. We kick out the state, right? The middleman. Right. And unlike capitalism, it's going to slow down the purification of billionaire, right? Jeff Bezos will not get 100 billion. He will get maybe 10 billion, but everybody else who wake up six o'clock in the morning will get a percentage of the success of the company. Right. This is how we can expand a quality middle class. And that's what is interesting. Interesting to say, no one should get a salary. We all should get a percentage. If the company fails, we all go down. If it's success, we all get the percentage of the profit. And why? Because we all tie in a means of participation in the success of this company, right? We go to school, we train ourselves. There's no reason that anybody should get a salary. And this is the consequence. I like Captain Luca. We have in the US there are 360 billionaires, but only How many? 360 okay. billionaires, but only seven are black. <laughs> And how black, many millionaires? How many millionaires? Uh, how many billionaires? I think they talk like in millions. There's like 121 million millionaires. Million. But when you calculate in the percentage, the population of of blacks, right, which is like close to uh, I think 17 percent, less than one percent of the total millionaires are black, right? Because most of the black they start having money. So they're getting where they start a company, they get a percentage, they pay themselves. But most still have jobs, right? So they're still having salaries, but they have a better skill, right? They're not the most slave in down south of 1900, right? Who could not write and read? Today, you go to college, have degrees, we have skills as like anybody else. But we have not accumulated enough wealth to control, to get on that other layer where we get also the percentage. So capitalism is 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 as bad to the labor class, to minorities, because it gets, these are the people richer and richer, and minority are left behind. They don't get, like I keep saying, develop the developed world, like the US, is so good at creating prosperity, but sucks at sharing it. And that's so why. How, how yes. do you feel? How do you feel about people who work on jobs, billion dollar corporations, but make ten dollars an hour? That's what I say. The problem is not the corporation. The problem is society. We still use the capitalist model without understanding why capitalism came about and why there's this double standard payment system. Right? You work, you get ten dollars and you fight for increase or minimum wage, right? But the people make big money, they, they, what you say? No tax on revenue on profit exceed two billion or five million. This big company, they don't even pay fucking taxes, right? On profit. I'm like, no, if you don't pay tax on profits, I don't have a problem, but we all get percentage of a profit. Forget about wage. We should not fight for wage. We should not fight to patch capitalism. We should adopt a new system. And that's why one of the reasons I go, I travel around the world because I'm like, it might not happen in my time, but I preach and it might be another society, right? Maybe Bangladesh will listen to me and try it. But as long as we go to the UK, I don't advocate for increase of minimum wage. I advocate to eliminate wage once for all. We all need to get the percentage of the profit. And the what, reason, yes. Now, what do you call it? Ethosism? Ethosism. Ethosism. Yes. Alternative sir. to capitalism. Yes. How, in your travels, um, how has it been when it comes to pushing this agenda and getting people to actually listen and possibly adapt ethosism? Is I found two two groups. There's us, 
our age who has so <laughs> so granted right formatted into captains they go like yeah yeah that stuff you talk about nice talk right bravo we like your shit it was a nice entertainment but then you have the other group that i care the most are the young one right that's the young one who stopped me after the talk and they really want to get it or they challenge it to get it so for me i look at yes when i'm in the room i tend to observe the young ones because you never know who they're gonna be tomorrow right the, the civil rights movement around the world were were students right it was not the old folks the old folks they just want they felt like the master was fine they mustn't care about them right but the young one are the, <laughs> the one that's the one one who looking at the new master who is the capitalist and like heck no this shit is not working for us right and those the one that i i have even on on facebook even people approach me the young one all over the globe right in the us iran in congo any country i go are the young one they give me hope because they see something else, right? They see, they see stuff in TikTok. They can use TikTok, but why are they not making money from it? I Means something's wrong, right? They see, and then I explain to them what's going on, and I tell the poor country, like, yes, you're not yet on the level of prosperity, but once you get there, you're gonna have a problem. I can, I can, I can kind of advise you, teach you how to get there, but this is how you need to do not to be locked have the same problem all the social problem than this other so-called developed country because I, I tell people like this what people don't know the 10 richest country so-called developed are also the 10 most indebted country in the world right when you right. look at the us 14 trillion china 10 trillion right germany four france three right belgium have the same size than burundi right small town country one europe one in Africa, Burundi dead poor. People say, oh, yes, they don't work. I said, no, Belgium debt is 600 billion for the standing population. Burundi debt is 1 billion. So I told people, yo, if you give Burundi 6 billion, it's going to become as rich as or seem to be developed in Belgium, right? right I'm like, right. no, these are the people are cheating because they, there's no way to stop this machine. Right, people want the party keep going. They need to give people credit because we overproducing. Right, the the slaver became so efficient that we produce so much. Right, we even have to, we have to cheapen our want and our desire. And the next, like every year, we have to have growth. Right, uh, otherwise somebody lose election. So yeah. they have to give everybody credit, credit. So the machine will keep going till when? I said no. As long as that the system we, we still adopt capitalism and we still blind ourselves with what I call the oxycotton of the people, which okay. is credit, is somewhere it's gonna blow up. But also, if we're cheating, even in the devil world, they're cheating, they gotta let also most of them brown and black country cheat. Because yes, here you can get a credit, right? People ask me why congo have so much mineral right they have diamond gold right uh, so much reserve but why the people are poor i'm like no that's not the right question the right question should be why the country is so rich but congolese in congo are poor and i tell people like this because they live in a low income country right well, i buy my, my i buy my coffee in kinshasa the same way than in new york same price but why the person who served me in New York have a car, a used car, an apartment, and this other one is dirt poor, right? Same price is because dignity, right? Here we feel like if you have, you work this job, you gotta be able to afford this. But in Congo, yes. the minimum wage is a dollar a day. It's not even enforced. A it's not dollar power. a day? Yes, and the day of work is not eight hours. It's as long as your boss want. It can be 12. Yeah. 20. Yeah. Yeah. He's the one who decided. No. Yes. And it's not enforced. No. This is if you know the law. And if you go to the justice, maybe the justice, the judge on the club. Right? <laughs> so there's a problem. So, but the, but the coffee is the same. So I look at people like me who go back home and say, this is a problem. 
A lot of people like me, when we go home, we, we don't talk about wage. We don't talk about unemployment. We talk about give people water, right? Uh, clean water. I'm like, no, no, no. Let people get rich and they want to fucking buy water if they want to. But he or she, in America also, you know, helping because people ask the same question. Why are they poor? Instead of be like, why wage in Congo is so low? Is the way to help them help themselves to mature their own question, to mature their own pursuit? Okay. All right, Joe M. Our time is up here. Yes. Uh, tell the people real quick how they can first and foremost keep up with you. How can they get this book about ethosism? And just recap everything the people need to know for they can definitely follow your movement and learn more about ethosism. And maybe we can get more people bored because I want a piece of the profit. I'm tired yes. of the, I'm tired of a wage. I want a piece of the profit. So first yes. of all, how can people find Joe M Joe they M just have, Manio they, on social media? They just have to Google uh ethosism. When you Google ethosism, because it's a word that I created, ethos ethos exists. But ethosism, it does not exist. So it's something that I created so that it be unique for people easy to find me or find the idea. Two, it's simple. I tell people, no, we're not as ignorant, illiterate, like slave were in 1900, 1800. We buy our own means of participation. So everybody got, need to get a percentage of the profit. And... I do other things like, yes, people preach about ethosism, embrace it, but also let's all try to make this world a better world, right? Even when we let travel, let understand each other pain and be, and bottom line, we got to understand, yes, poverty is all over, but it's different, right? One is modern and one is primitive. Yeah. We should not blame people for being poor. We should we should wage a war against poverty and stop waging a war the a war against the poor. Right, right. Joe, I definitely appreciate your time, sir. Um, how can people get that book? They just need to Google ethosism is on Amazon and everywhere else. Uh, yes, they can get it. Funny thing, also they can get it in different languages. I think even a Japanese version is coming out. So yes, it's different language. They just have to Google ethosism go on even youtube they can go on youtube when they click on when they do ethosism then they will see there's some cartoon about trying to explain the idea so yes they can track me down anytime joe i definitely appreciate your time sir um man i wish i could talk to you all day this is very very interesting but we gotta go You're interesting yeah I'm more interesting than i am because you know some people do post they do radio but there's not the love right they're just doing it just because they were born. But some people like you, you feel in the spirit like you you make it easy for me to express my ideas. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. We need more people like you who look like us doing this representation matter to make the kid dreams, right? For create these kid dreams. So do what you do. Much love. You show me love. You even made me tell stuff, my story, in a better way. Okay. Well, I, Joe, I appreciate it. And, um, bro, we'll definitely talk again, okay? Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was created all my guy Joe M. Seca Mayo Mano. Y'all make sure y'all follow him. He also has a website, um, and I think it's Joe M. I'm not sure, but just Google, just Google ethosism. All right, we don't need to fight the poverty stricken, we need to actually fight poverty. All right, it's your boy Big XL. This is Ryan Dirty Show. We bridge the gap between hip hop and everyday life, man. We'll see you guys later. Peace. Legendary status. Big XL. Sam Pisa, a.k.a. ATF. Where y'all gonna learn, man? You can't stop what's inevitable. It's the incredible. Peasy AKTF dropping jewels, but they edible. I ate my vegetables, but he ate my spinach. Riding with Vic again, so no, we ain't finished. Legendary status, so no, you cannot copy. Riding dirty radio, so crispy, y'all so sloppy. Insta to the street, so we know just what is needed. We keep it underground, staying down, cause we ain't greedy. This is where you find what is popping for the culture, where we keeping it all precious. Stay away from all the vultures. No, scavengers here, just keeping it real. Big got it out the mud, but it's still so clear. So sit back, relax, and just let us lead you. If you're trolling for no reason, then we don't.